Welcome back to Let's Play the Adventures of Batman and Robin. Last time we dealt with the Scarecrow, who was trying to use his fear toxin to poison the minds of innocent Gothamites, if that's even a word, and turn him against us, but he failed. And today we have another iconic villain to deal with, perhaps one of the most iconic villains in the entire Batman canon. And this time I don't need to keep up the suspense of who it is because you can see him on the screen right in front of you. This is the Riddler, also used his real name, Edward Nigma. And by the way, Edward Nigma might be my favourite real name ever for a comic book villain in either Batman or any other series. It's clever, it's a pun, it makes sense, it just ticks all the boxes. Although, the name of the stage would have been this, not very imaginative, but I can forgive it because this is a very interesting level of the game. Not least because of the opening cutscene. As Ridger is explaining here, he's kidnapped Barbara Gordon in a virtual reality game called Maze of the Minotaur, and we have to go in and rescue her. Now, Barbara Gordon is better known to fans of the series as Batgirl. She's Batgirl's secret identity. Now, Batgirl didn't make an appearance until Series 3 of the animated series, at which point it had been renamed to The Adventures of Batman and Robin. But Barbara Gordon did make a couple of appearances, albeit just cameos, uh, before Batgirl was introduced. So, that's just an interesting tidbit that I thought people may not know and should. Also, I'm not quite sure how Alfred knows that Batman needs to bring plastic explosives to blow walls in a virtual reality simulation. I think that may be a plot hole. Speaking of equipment, you need to bring the plastic explosive and the x-ray goggles. These are essential or you cannot beat the level. If you don't bring those two items along, you are SOL. Anything else you don't need. You're definitely not going to need the bat spray or the smoke bomb. Maybe bring along the ninja stars to give yourself a slightly easier time with the enemies, but I don't bother with it because it's kind of a slog as is trolling through the equipment screen. Also, for some reason, I have a mental image of Batman drawing from a virtual cache of weapons, similar to how Neo did in the first Matrix film. You know, the good one, as opposed to the two sequels, which I can trust the obliged never to mention again. Ever. Now, you might recall that the last stage was taken almost verbatim from an episode of the TV series, in that case, Nothing to Fear. Well, this level ups the ante by taking material from not one, but two episodes of the show. This first part of the level is taken from If You're So Smart, Why Aren't You Rich? That served as Riddler's debut to the animated series, and I'll talk a little bit more about it in a few minutes time, because we have a bit of a gameplay element to encounter here. It looks like we come to a dead end, but if you equip the X-ray goggles, you can see this is a fake wall. You then equip your plastic explosive to bust a hole through it, it disappears, and you can continue on your journey. Now you might well be thinking that it's advantageous to keep the X-ray goggles on all the time, that way you can see the fake walls without having to worry about switching for your items. Well, yes you can, but you also can't see the map if you do that, and for a maze as big as this, you're going to want to see the map. It doesn't look particularly uh, complicated at first, trust me, we have but reached the tip of the iceberg. Now sometimes you come across these question mark panels on the floor. Stepping on them will trigger some sort of event. They may teleport you to a different part of the maze, or as in this case, they may cause riddles to appear and set you a riddle of some kind. All of these riddles are taken straight from the episode in question, and I really like that. It gives a really nice touch of authenticity to the game. Some of the Konami obviously did their homework. Either that or they just binge watched all the episodes of the TV series. Either it's preferable. Now the obvious answer here is a straight line. Unfortunately, as with most uh, riddles in real life, the obvious answer is almost always the wrong one as well, as is the case here. And if you get the answer wrong, we are transported to the Wasteland. Now this sounds kind of bad, doesn't it? It is and it isn't. It's a bit of a pain if you get sent to the Wasteland. You also go here if you die, which is a, a third incentive to not die, because it can be really annoying if you get really into the maze, then die, and you have to go all the way back to the start. Although if you come here, you do get a battery icon, which is a nice bonus for getting the answer wrong. Anyway, there's nothing much more to talk about here. The maze, as you can see with the map, just links back to where we were. So let's go ahead to the right answer to the riddle. As, as I say, was revealed in the TV series, it is, of course, a curved line. Now, I'm thinking, why is it a curved line, not a straight one? Surely a straight one, you know, gets from A to B quicker than a curved one. Well, no, and here comes the riddle to explain exactly why that's the right answer. Yes, as Mr. Nemo quite quickly states, it's because the Earth is round. Now, I have a small confession to make. I did actually know the answer to that riddle. Mainly because I watched the episode prior to recording this. I just want to show what happened if you got a wrong answer, either deliberately or otherwise. I know you don't believe me, but that's my story and I'm sticking to it. 
Also, the sharper item, obviously, will notice that the map looks a little different. The outline of the map looks a little different before the cut and after it. No real secret there. I just went back and filled in every last square of the map. Do you have to do this? No. Did I? Yes. Why? Because I always show off everything I possibly can when it comes to a Let's Play. I know it's borderline OCD, but it's just the way I am. I can't help it. Although I don't actually have OCD. That's the strange thing about it. Also, we picked up a battery icon there, although I didn't need it because I already had five plastic explosives, and that's the maximum you can hold. Now you'll notice we've got the return of the goons, although they now have a, a, an upgrade of sorts by being virtual. Also, come back here! You don't run away from Batman! Come back and take your beating like a man! Coward. Yeah, that's it. The goons are virtual, and I do like the added touch that they fade away or disintegrate after you kill them. I'm going to go ahead and assume that these are not actually real people within the concept of the TV series, and that they're actually just constructs of the virtual reality world that the Riddler created, but it's possible they could be Riddler's minions who've been plugged into the system in an attempt to stop the bat, in which case these are the most loyal minions of all time. Also, what is it with people with machine guns running away from Batman today? Come back and get punched! Thank you! Now we come to a locked door here, and you have to choose one of three keys to open it. Let's do what Batman did in the episode and choose the key D. Bad idea, because it causes these giant players to shoot out and hit the wall behind you. You might think that choose a key means to choose a key, but that's an even worse idea because that causes three players to show up. Make sure you're ducking as soon as you enter the wrong answer or you will get hit by the blade at the top. The one along the floor is kind of tricky to avoid, hence why it hit me. The timing for the jump is kind of precise. Now the correct answer is C. Those of you who are musically inclined will have already got this answer. Those of you who aren't, fear not, because here comes off the neighborhood rhythm to explain the way. It's all to do with the number of sharps that each note has. D has two, A has three, but C has no sharps and therefore no blades. Also, a rare compliment from the Riddler there. I do like how, in the amateur series at least, Batman and the Riddler had a grudging respect for one another. Batman acknowledges that Riddler is a genius, albeit a flawed, maniacal one. While the Riddler admits that Batman is not just a brawny superhero, he also has brains to match. And now we come to one of the more fiendish traps that this maze has to offer. This may look like just another ordinary question mark panel, but it's far from it. It may not be immediately apparent looking at the map, but that question mark panel actually sent me back further into the maze. I know we haven't been here yet, but this is not the right way to go, trust me. Now, you can get a life refill if you head all the way to the left here, which is a nice bonus, I guess, but it's not really worth the hassle this time because it's a long way back to where you should be. Fortunately, any questions have managed to stay answered, so we don't have to deal with the large blades or, or the key puzzle again, the door will just be open. But let's get back to where we need to go, but first, let me just show something rather funny that happened during this take. Remember the guy with the machine gun who ran away from me? Well, it turns out, if you let him run away from you, then hit with the bad rank, he'll drop his gun, continue to run, and keep your eye on this guy, he will eventually run all the way into the right wall, at which point he'll revert back to being a normal goon. Now what you're actually meant to do is use your extra vision to reveal that this is in fact a fake wall, blast your way through it with your explosives, and then reveal the real path further into the maze. I use the extra vision here just to prove that, that isn't a fake wall, though if you look at the map, it couldn't possibly be a fake wall, because that would take you beyond the boundaries of the maze, and that would never do. And because this is a Konami game, they pull the exact same trick on you twice in a row, but this time, you're not going to be fooled because you've just encountered it. At least those fake pounds don't take you all the way back to the wasteland, because my god, will that ever suck. Now, I mentioned earlier that this part of the level was taken from you, you're so smart, why aren't you rich? The wasteland makes an appearance in that episode, and actually has a double meaning. It's both the name of a dead-end area in the maze game that Robin plays early in the episode, and it's the name of a nightclub owned by the character Muckridge. Muckridge is Edward Nigma's boss. Nigma works for Competitron as a computer programmer, and develops a virtual reality game called Riddle of the Minotaur, presented in this game as Maze of the Minotaur for some reason. Unfortunately, Muckridge is a shady businessman, and tricks Nigma into signing away his rights to the game. He then fires him so he can't make a profit from it. Understandably annoyed, Nigma transforms into the Riddler, first to destroy Mockridge, and traps him in a real-life version of the maze that we've been going through in this virtual reality simulation. Also, we come to the final riddle with a giant golden minotaur robot, and Barbara Gordon and Commissioner Gordon strapped to the wall behind us. Which is odd because Commissioner Gordon wasn't mentioned at all in the opening cutscene. Now, for some reason, you're only given initials to work with here, but fortunately they're rather limited in number, and more to the point, I know that the answer is HB from watching the episode. 
and no past me, the answer to the final riddle is not high definition. I was not going back to the wasteland, not after all the effort I put into it getting here. No way. HB in this instance standing for human brain. Getting the right answer causes the Gordons to disappear, which prompts me to ask if they were ever actually there in the first place. Also, although he wasn't mentioned at all in the opening cutscene, Commissioner Gordon is kidnapped in the other episode that this level takes from, whereas Barbara Gordon is the true level now because she doesn't appear in either episode. Getting the right answer also angers the Riddler to the point that he sticks his golden minotaur robot or whatever the hell this thing is on us. Now this guy looks big, powerful and intimidating, but he's actually a cakewalk. If you have any plastic explosives left over, use them on him because they're really effective. Otherwise, wait for him to wander over to the wall, jump over him, and then he'll take all the time in the world to turn around and you can get a load of free hits on him. Just don't get too cocky because you can also sort of bait him out like walk up to him, punch him and then slowly back away. But you need to leave yourself enough room to jump over him, otherwise you jump on him, and as I say, he does do a lot of damage if he does manage to hit you. Otherwise, he's really rather easy. Also, don't use the battering against him because it's completely ineffective. And yes, that Minotaur did show up in the episode as well, where it was just as ineffective at killing our hero. The Riddler shows up once again to give us another backhanded compliment, it's kind of a shame they didn't give the Riddler an actual portrait as opposed to just text saying THE RIDDLER, I'm not sure why they did that, they even do that in the game over screen for him. Anyway, he drops the standard of the real threat begins now cliche, the floor disappears, and we drop with it. But don't worry, because your game's not over, he's just transporting you to a different part of his virtual reality world. And now we switch focus to another episode of the TV series. In this case, what is reality? Also, I personally love this little bit of dialogue exchange between Batman and the Riddler, maybe because Riddler is possibly indirectly referencing War Games, a 1980s movie starring Matthew Broderick, where he breaks into a government supercomputer and almost sets off World War III. Also, the Riddler was lying earlier, because there's nothing relaxing about this game of chess whatsoever. In fact, this is the most dangerous game of chess since Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. We have these pawns who are slowly lance us down the ground three times and you have to roll underneath them. We also have these rock pieces that you have to punch four times in order to blow up. These elements aren't particularly important now, but will be very important within the next 30 seconds or so. The Riddler finally decides to show his face, or at least a virtual representation of it, and this scene will be very familiar to those of you who saw week two of the Let's Play Super School competition. In fact, it was that video that inspired me to eventually do a full LP of this game. This next part is very tricky indeed. The floor will collapse underneath you if you stand in it for too long, while the Riddler zaps tiles ahead of you in an attempt to make you fall down the pit. And these jumps are extremely precise. One pixel off and you'll fall to your doom. We also have another added obstruction in these rooks. The first one isn't too tricky to get rid of. This one, however, if you don't do those bunny hops, as I like to call them leading up to it, I find I never had enough time and fell straight down the pit. That one part caused me more failed tests than I care to mention. Don't bunny hop here because you'd like to just fall straight into a pit. Two advantages that you have here. That laser in itself cannot harm you, and also the riddle will only ever zap orange tiles. Once you get past the falling four part, you're still not out of the woods because he'll now control this rook in an attempt to crush you, and it can actually insta-kill you if it hits you in the right way. Run under these uh, pawns lances after they hit the ground the third time, then just run all the way to the right until the rook explodes. Now we've finally reached the boss fight for this level. But those of you who were expecting the Riddler to come down and face us hand to hand, prepare to be mortally disappointed. The Riddler is a cerebral villain. Physical's just not his style. And therefore, instead of facing us himself, he instead summons these two chess pieces, specifically kings, to battle with us. Also, I like how even a villain like the Riddler adheres to the rules of chess and makes white go first. Now you need to keep your wits about you at all times during this boss fight. The kids only have one attack, which is to come down from the top of the screen and try and crush you. But if they manage to do that, it's an insta-kill, so be careful. There are two strategies to take these guys on. You can either position them on opposite sides of the screen and slowly whittle down their health with jump kicks, or you can do what I'm doing here, and deliberately trap yourself on one side of the room. Now this may seem like a suicidal strategy, but it's actually very effective. Yes, you do have less room to move around in, but you can actually get two hits on the king instead of one. Because of that, the White King went down extremely easily. Once he's down to only one King, Riddler himself will directly intervene in the boss fight. 
And now the king has a couple of extra attacks. He can still try and crush you, but wants to try and push you into a hole in the floor the Riddler creates. To get past that, all you need to do is just ward jump off the king. It works every time. The king can also try and push you into the right side of the screen, but this cannot harm you. And also have to get a free hit if you punch. Constant threat of one hit KO notwithstanding, this is definitely one of those times where the road leading up to the boss is far harder than the boss itself. With that, we pull the plug on Riddler and finally bring this stage to an end. And this has to be the longest stage in the entire game. It certainly felt like it for me anyway. It was still pretty enjoyable though. So, join me next time for the final challenge. And I'll give you one hint as to what that might be. This game was made by Konami. Pull on that for a while. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.